Well, howdy, howdy. It's Mr. Thompson here with a video math lesson. Today we're looking at integer operations, all kinds of things we're going to do with integers. All right, now first, before we um, uh, really get into it, we got to make sure we understand exactly what we're talking about here. Okay, integers and operations. So integers, all right, what are integers? Well, integers are all the whole numbers. Okay, so the easy ones are stuff like 1, 2, and 3 right? Four, five, six, and so on, okay? If you're counting people, usually we use integers, okay? Um, unless you're talking about like your little brother or something and whatever. But um, yeah, we don't usually have half a person, that kind of thing. Whole numbers, okay? But positive numbers aren't the only whole numbers. We also have negative whole numbers, right? Negative one, negative two, negative three, and so on. Hopefully you don't have negative integers of money, because that would mean you would be owing people money, right? <clears throat> um, but that we're not done yet. We've got positive, negative, and we have something in between the positives and the negatives. That is zero, okay? So now we've got all the integers. So these are the numbers we're talking about. They go up to infinity and down to negative infinity, right? All the whole numbers, all right? Okay, so that's integers. What are operations? Operations are pretty simple. Adding, subtracting, dividing, multiplying, uh, and we're also going to talk about powers, okay, a little bit. Um, there are more operations, but these are the simplest ones, the ones we do um, with integers the most, so we'll talk about these. Um, subtracting can also be referred to as take away, taking away, okay. Um, the word subtract can means the same thing as take away. Um, <clears throat> now, one little thing I'd like to say about these, which I think gets overlooked a bit, and you'll hear um, a bit of misuse with some, um, not so much these words, but some other ones that I'll point out. Um, these words, um, it's important to note, these are verbs, okay? So these are action words. When we're talking about what we're doing, we use these words, okay? And often these get mixed up with the symbols, okay? These are the symbols. This is a symbol for adding for subtracting, for division, for multiplying. We'll talk about the symbol for powers. It's a little bit um, different. <clears throat> um, and when we read these uh, symbols, there's words we say. So when we read the, the addition symbol, we say plus. When we read the minus symbol, we say minus. Uh, the subtract, subtracting symbol, we say minus. When we read the division symbol, we say divided by. And when we read the uh, multiplication symbol, we, we say times, right? Now, it's important to note these are not verbs, right? <clears throat> what you hear a lot is people say something like, uh, I timesed it by five, or we need to times it by five, or something like that. But that's using the word times, which is just what we say when we read this symbol. They're using it as a verb. The verb is multiply, right? So you didn't times it by five, you multiplied it by five, and so on, okay? So uh, if you hear people saying, or if you hear yourself saying, I timesed it by, or something like that, okay? Um, not a big deal, okay? I'm not going to um, really harp on about it, but it's worth noting that that's not really the correct way to say it, okay? All right, uh, rant over. All right, moving on. Uh, let's talk about adding, okay? When we add uh, a negative, that's the same as subtracting, okay? Subtracting a positive, right? Um, so, for example, if we have 5 plus negative 3, Right? That's the same as 5 minus 3, okay? which we know, of course, is 2. All right? um, so, uh, and then uh, subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. Okay? So if we have something like 5 minus negative 3, we can just say the same, that's the same as 5 plus 3. Okay? These are just rules. We can always use. This is always true. Okay? 5 plus 3 is, of course, 8. Nice and easy. Okay? Now, um, you might think, well, that's, that's really obvious or really easy or whatever, but sometimes it gets a little bit tricky. Okay, so if we have something like negative 5 plus 3 or negative 5 plus 8 or negative 5 plus negative 3 and negative 5 minus 8, this, this can get a little bit tricky. So um, what I like to use is the number line. Okay, if you're a visual person, we'll go over um, a different method of doing these problems. Uh, if, this, if you're someone who kind of gets stuck on these, um, the one method that I particularly like is, is thinking of a number line, or you might even have a number line drawn in your um, notebook or something like that. But um, a number line is just a line. Um, it goes on forever in either end, so that's why we have these arrows, right? And in the middle is zero, right? On the right is positives, and on the left is negatives. So just represent that with one number or whatever numbers you want. Okay? <clears throat> now, when you're on the number line, it's important to remember that adding means moving to the right, all right? And subtracting means moving to the left. Okay, 
Um, so let's look at these particular examples, okay? We'll start with negative 5 plus 3, right? Well, what we do is we go to where that um, where we're starting, right? We're starting at negative 5, right? So we kind of um, look at that part right there, and then we say, well, we're adding 3. So that means we're moving to the right 3. So we start at negative 5, and we go over 1, 2, 3, right? And that puts us at negative 2, right? Okay, so that's one way to do that kind of problem. Let's look at the rest of these, all right? Um, negative 5 plus 8, we'll again start at negative 5, okay? And we're moving to the right, we're adding. So we go over if, um, 8, which brings us, moving over to the right 5 brings us to the, to the 0, and then 3 more is a total of 8 for positive 3, all right? Negative 5 plus negative 3, well, adding a negative is the same as subtracting, so really we're subtracting. Right, we're moving to the left. Okay, so negative five plus negative three. We'll start here, and then we go three down to the left. One, two, three. Right, so we're at negative eight. Okay, how about this last one? Negative five minus negative eight. We're starting down here. Now, um, uh, subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. So this is actually negative five plus eight. So we're going to move to the right. We're here. We're going to go plus eight, and and we've already kind of done that problem, right? That's actually the same as this one, so the answer is 3, okay? Um, so uh, that's that's a good way to do those problems if you're a particularly visual thinker, okay? If you're not, if you just like to do things kind of by the by the book um, and you want some rules for adding and subtracting, okay, we have some, some rules, all right? Um, so going through those rules, the first one we're going to do a rule for subtraction, and this is pretty simple turn all subtraction into addition. Okay, we don't do, sub it's, it's easy, the way, best way to do subtracting is by not subtracting, by adding. Okay, so for example, if we have 2 minus negative 7, this one's easy, right? We're going to turn that into 2 plus, we always want that plus, and we were subtracting a negative, so now we're going to be adding a positive, right? So that's, de it's pretty easy to see, that's the easiest way to do this, okay? This one maybe is not so simple. Okay, negative 2 minus 13. Now, some people, that's pretty easy to do. You just do it in your head, no problem. Okay, or you might use the number line. Or you might just get confused with this kind of thing. Um, and the number line, maybe it doesn't help you. So what you can do is turn this into addition. And subtracting, uh, for, we're going to have our negative 2. And then we're going to have a plus, right? Because we want to turn this into addition. Now, subtracting is the same as adding a negative. So we now have negative 2 plus negative 13. Now that we, when we turn subtraction into addition, we can use our addition rules um, to do these. So let's look at the addition rules. Um, oh, we have one more example. Okay, 2 minus 8. Uh, we have 2, and then we're going to have a plus, right? And instead of subtracting, we're going to add a negative. So um, 2 minus 8 becomes 2 plus negative 8, okay? All right, yeah. Now, moving on to addition, all right? Now, there's two options when you're adding. Um, there's two different scenarios. You're either going to be adding numbers with the same sign, as we'll start with here, or adding numbers with different signs, okay? Now, sign, when I say sign, what I mean is the negative or positiveness of it, right? So, um, when we're adding numbers with the same sign, they're either both going to be negative or they're both positive, okay? The rule for doing this is ignore the sign, all right? and just add the numbers. So basically, you can assume they don't have a sign and just add them, all right? Easy enough. The answer is going to have the same sign as the numbers did to begin with, okay? So pretty simple. Positive, I mean, we hardly have to do this, right? They're both positive. We'll ignore the fact that they're positive, and we'll say 2 plus 7. We know that's 9, right? And the numbers were positive to begin with, so the answer is positive. Easy, right? Let's look at these negative ones. Uh, negative 2 plus negative 13. Now, I'll point out that's our problem up here, right? Negative 2 plus negative 13. Now, we will actually ignore the fact that they are negative, okay, and just take 2 and 13 and add them, all right? So what's 2 plus 13? It's 15, right? The numbers to begin with were negative, so the 15 is going to be negative as well, okay? Easy, right? Um, okay, <clears throat> let's look at... Um, adding numbers with different signs, right? So one's positive and one is negative, okay? If one's positive and one's negative, what we're going to do is, again, ignore the sign, ignore that they're positive or negative, subtract the smaller one from the larger one. What that means is, whichever number's bigger, and um, really what we're talking about is the one that's further from zero, okay? And um, 
We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But we'll take the bigger one. So, And especially if you ignore the signs, it's easy to think about what's the bigger one. It's just the bigger number, right? When they're both sort of think of them both as positive. Take the bigger one, subtract the smaller one. Bigger one minus the smaller one. That's what you'll have. Um, and then the answer will have the same sign as the larger number. Okay, so we have our uh, example from up here, right? Uh, 2 plus negative 8, right? 2 plus negative 8, we're adding numbers with different signs, okay? What we're going to do is um, we're going to ignore the fact that, they're, that the one's negative. We'll just take 2 and 8. 8 is bigger, right? It's further from 0, okay? But you can just think two, 8 is bigger than 2, right? If they're both positive, 8's bigger than 2. So we do 8 minus 2, all right? 8 minus 2 is 6, and we take the same sign as the larger one uh, was to begin with, right? So 8 is bigger, and it was negative, so our answer is negative, okay? Let's do one more example about that uh, with this. Negative 10 plus 17, okay? If they're both positive, 17 is bigger. We do 17 minus 10, and we get 7, right? Now, the 17 was bigger to begin with. So the answer has the same sign as that, okay? And these are rules that you can always, always follow. If you turn subtraction into division, uh, sorry, subtraction into addition, and then you follow these rules, this one for when they have the same sign, and then this one for when they have different signs, you can't go wrong. It always works, okay? All right, let's talk about multiplying, okay? Rules for multiplying. This is pretty simple, okay? Basically, if you have a positive times a positive, you get a positive. Okay, this is pretty standard. You know, 2 times 5 is 10. 3 times 6 uh, is 18, right? So positive times positive is a positive, all right? A negative times a negative is also a positive, okay? The way I think about it is one negative sort of cancels out another, okay? And we get positive. So negative times a negative is a positive. So negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25, right? Positive times a negative, okay? This is, they're different, right? And now we get a negative. The one negative doesn't have another one to cancel it out, so it sticks around, and it stays, and the answer is negative. Positive times negative is a negative. Now, you might wonder about a negative times a positive. Well, that's actually the same as the previous one, right? Because it doesn't matter what order you multiply things in. So this is actually the same as the previous one. So, of course, it's going to be negative, okay? So um, the way I think about these is, um, you know, I, I group those two kind of together. These ones are the same. They have the same sign to begin with and you get a positive. Um, these ones down here, they had a different sign to begin with, and you get a negative, right? So 2 times 8, positive 2 times positive 8, positive 16. Negative 2 times negative 8, positive 16. Negative 2 times positive 8 is negative 16, right? And 2 times negative 8 is negative 16, right? So one example for each of those four scenarios. Okay, now the great thing is with division, okay, rules for dividing, exactly the same as the multiplication, okay? So positives, um, positive divided by a positive is a positive, negative divided by a negative is a positive, um, and, you know, again, if they have a different sign, then it comes out negative, okay? I can go back and forth between multiplying and dividing, and you'll notice the only thing that changes is the signs, uh, the, the symbols, right? The um, division and multiplication. The examples work out the same too. I put you'll notice they're in a different order. Okay, so before it was two times eight equals sixteen. Now we have sixteen divided by two equals eight. But um, I'll let you check those out if you want to pause the video or whatever. Okay. Last thing. Okay, squares and cubes. Squares and cubes. So um, squares uh, are when we have something like a number times itself. A number times the same number. So the letter A here just represents a number. All right. But whenever you see A, it's the same number as any other A, right? So A could be 2 or 3 or 4, and then A would be whatever A was, right? So we have a number times itself, and when we have that, we write that as A squared with a little number up and to the right, right? Um, so that represents A squared. So if you see something like 2 squared, you know that that's actually 2 times 2, which is, of course, 4, okay? Now, cubes are when we have something like A times A times A, we call that A cubed, right? A with a 3, okay? Uh, a little 3 up and to the right, okay? And you might see a pattern here, and yes, you can do bigger numbers if you have four A's and it's A to the fourth and so on. Okay, fourth power, that's why we call them powers. Okay, um, this here though, okay, so if you see something like 2 cubed, you just know that that's 2 times 2 times 2, 
right? Which you can do them one after the other. Two times two is four, right? Times two is eight. Okay, so two cubed is eight. All right, that brings us to um, square roots and cube roots. Okay, the, this um, symbol here that I've drawn, funky little thing, is called a, a radicand. Okay, um, and it's uh, for when we're taking the square root. Now, when you take the square root of a number. Um, we'll start um, talking about this by taking, we take the square roots of numbers that are perfect squares. So they're the square of another number. Okay, then the square root of that number equals the number that was the, you were squaring. Okay, it gets a little bit confusing, but basically we can say something like the square root of 4. Okay, now we know that 4 is 2 squared. Therefore, the square root of 4 is 2. Okay, so it's basically just squares in reverse. Okay, undoing squares, sort of. All right, same thing with cube roots. All right, we can take the cube root of a number that has been cubed, and then the answer is just that number. So the cube root of 8, we know that um, 8 is um, just 2 cubed, so the cube root of 8 is 2. Whew. Okay, lots of information. You can watch that video again. Hopefully that's mostly simple stuff you learned before, but best of luck. See you next time.